The investment casting process is also known as the lost wax process. So that's where we'll start. Hey, Jim. Hey, good hey, morning. Can we have a tour? Sure, let's go. We'll take you into the wax room first to show you how wax patterns are made for the initial start of the process. This is a wax pattern. It is the net shape of the final casting. The goal here is to make the wax pattern, assemble them onto a tree, that'll eventually become the shell mold. The wax injection tool is what makes the wax pattern. The investment casting has one of the lowest cost tooling charges as any other process due to the simplicity of making the tool. Now, let's go over and see them build a tree. So Tina here is making what we call a tree, also known as a sprue. Each wax pattern that you see here has to be assembled onto a tree like this in order to create a full tree like you see here. This will eventually be turned into metal and be able to make the casting that we have here. Thanks, Tina. Have a good afternoon. Here's another example of a large wax pattern uh, where the tree is assembled around the pattern. A little different than what you just saw earlier with Tina putting one pattern on a tree with a multiple 24 patterns per tree. Due to the size of this pattern that will be a casting, we can only accommodate molds that are the size that you see here. Our sweet spot is a casting that you can hold in your hand or slightly bigger. Now from here, the tree goes into the dip room to have ceramic coated to the outside of the wax tree. This is why Shellmet is called Shellmet. Here's the beginning where we're starting to build the shell around the wax tree that will eventually be poured with metal. Shell, met, shell metal. Okay, what you're seeing here is Dave and Scott applying the first dip coat of shell material to the wax tree that you saw earlier. As you see these two gentlemen here, they're applying the dip coat. After the shell has been built onto the wax tree, we have to remove the wax from that shell. Now how are we going to get the wax out of that shell? Behind me is the autoclave. So we use steam and pressure. The pressure prevents the shell from cracking. The temperature of the steam is like 350 degrees which melts the wax out of the shell. Man, it's hot in here. We're here now in the pouring department, filling the shells that we just removed the wax from uh, with alloy specified by the customer. And speaking of metals or alloys, we pour over a hundred different alloys to customer specification. What we're looking at now is where all the magic happens. It's a choreography of five men moving around the pouring department Notice how no time is wasted. The efficiency is amazing. Remember, these men cannot see each other with the hoods on, protective gear, so they kind of have to know where each one is standing. The shells get put into the curing furnace at about 2,000 degrees. This will remove any remaining wax that wasn't removed from the autoclave and will also cure that shell hard enough, strong enough to hold the alloy that's going to be poured into it. Our head melter is making additions to the molten metal. Nope, he's not making soup. He's adding elements that get burned off during the melting process. Could be carbon, could be silicon, could be manganese. As you can see, here at Shellmet, we're safety-minded. We have an ErgoLift arm, which uh, carries the pouring crucible, transferring the metal from the melt furnace to the mold, which carries the load for that operator, so he doesn't have to break his back trying to hold that fork way out in front of him. Every safety measure we take means lower costs to the customer. So JT, tell them why we have two different type of melting furnaces. We use an induction melting unit to melt all of our ferrous metals and that uses a very strong magnetic field and that's pretty cool that a magnetic field can actually melt metal. Uh, for our aluminum alloys we use just an electric uh, heating element type furnace and that keeps the metal very still no turbulence in there so that it doesn't absorb any gases from the atmosphere. After the shells are filled with alloy, they're moved over to a cooling table, allowing the alloy to come down to a temperature that these molds can be handled. And they're then carried over to the cutoff saw to remove the casting from the tree that you originally saw in the wax room and separates the casting from the tree. Every casting has to have a way for the metal to get into the casting. It's called a gate. These are the gates that are going to be removed and blended into the casting. And that's where our skilled people come in, hand grinding each casting, removing the gate, and giving us the finish that we're looking for. And voila, 
the gain is gone, it's blended in, and then we'll sandblast this casting to give it the same grain bat finish as the surrounding area. What we have behind me is a shot blast machine, which cleans the castings, gives them a gray mat finish. The castings tumble while the shot is being thrown at the castings. We're removing any casting scale, uh, leftover shell material, or any uh, shiny grinding marks that are not required. This is why we're not called shell left. <laughs>